We are moving up to Belgium and I will present in my name and also for my colleague uh, an overview of the fortified hill site in central Belgium during the 5th century BC. This is a structure, just a presentation, short presentation of the site. Okay, sorry I didn't see it. First a presentation of the sites, then a viewshed analysis that has been done by Sarah, and then about the material culture, more specifically the red painted camel pottery. These are the map from Belgium, but here this central range is a hilly area that crosses to Belgium with the uh, with different sites. You have Camelberg here, the Koeyhem, then you have the Kesterberg and Kesselberg, and if you see in between this river system here, there is a gap. We don't know, we haven't found any site, but we are expecting that probably there can be another site of the 5th century be present. And interesting is here in the Limburg plateau that we have two elite burials belonging to the 5th century BC, but no indications of settlements associated with, with it. Best document site that we have for the moment is the Camelberg that has been excavated between 63 in 98 by Potman and Van Dorsler from the uh, Kent and Leuven University. This is a modern view of the site. It's completely covered with trees and it's at this moment protected as an uh, ecological area. What you see here is uh, a view of 1918. In the First World War, Camelberg was part of the British defensive system and especially in the German offensive and the British counteroffensive in 1918. There have been quite heavy fighting on the hill, and you see the view, it's completely naked at that moment after the fight, after the, the battles of, uh, of May and uh, September. This is the excavation, what you see, the trench, and what is typical, was one of the problems that they had, they were only allowed to make trenches between the trees. So you had, they, didn't, they were not allowed to have an open areas, and they focused with the series of trenches mostly on the slopes, like you see. The inner part has never been uh, excavated uh, for the moment. So most of the information is coming from the northern slope here and from the slope here in the, in the south. What do we know about? Because it has been focused on the slope that there is a complex fortified system with a lot of, this is one of the presents in what you have an earthen rampart with a wooden palisade and a ditch. Especially the northern part is very complex, it's a bit different for uses of uh, defensive system, different phases. This is a part of the southern with the slope here, which is very simple. And here we have an earthen rampart uh, fortified with uh, a stone wall also. This uh, an internal structure, we don't know much about it. There have been recorded some ditches. It's not really clear what they mentioned. Maybe they are system of dividing uh, the internal in the, in, in the first plot, but we don't have a good idea about the internal system. And that is the problem we have for all the, the fortified sites in, uh, in Belgium. What we do know from the excavation, although it has been quite disturbed by the, by the World War, but there are a lot of finds that suggest that they are part of the fifth century elite networking system. You have this here, this Etruscan style, what they call the Bassin type Genova. You see the Camelberg here, it's mostly found in Italy, a part in northern France. You have the site of Bourges and you have the find in Camelberg. Another one element that you have here on top is a fragment also of Attic black figured pottery that mostly is known also in the Halsted site. So we are really up north, but the, the people who own this site, who are living on it, seems to have making part of these European 5th century and uh, network systems. The other site is Cohen. It's excavated one part by the same team uh, by the Regional Society on the direction of Van Dursla uh, excavated and then we have the excavation from the local amateur archaeologists who found it out. This is the view of Cohen, of uh, what we call Cohen Bos. This is the part you see here, it's on the top and the excavator later found that there was, seems to be a second structure, but he has never been documented. This is one of the problems, especially with the amateur archaeologists, that he has been digging trenches, but not really in very good recording. What we know from the excavation by the Vobov team on the Van Dorslav is that there is a ditch here, this part, but it's still visible in some places in the landscape. 
There was a double palisade, and most interesting, there were some pits also. In the most interesting was this rectangular structure that uh, that had been uh, it had been interpreted as a ritual structure. The site of Kester is only small excavation by a local amateur amateur archaeologist who found some pits with material. You see the location also, but there have been no further excavation around the site. It's also, uh, so we don't have any ideas about the ramparts or so, but the location it has the same as Camelberg and Coisem as the other ones. And the last site is Kesselberg, and here also we have the same local amateur archaeologist who has been recording things, who talks about the presence of pits, even he has recorded an herb. There has only been one excavation and more registration in, uh, in 1959 by Mertes from the Leuven University, and in 2013, the, the RAP has done an evaluation of the site for the, for the Flemish government, because this site is now also protected uh, by um, an ecologically protected area. This is the only plan that exists for the moment of the site, where you see here the rampart surrounding the, the, the site, and this is the trench that has been made now by, by the Dutch colleagues, in evaluating the site where you see also an earthen rampart and it's an earthen wall and it's a system that protects the site. As you see we have a lot of, there is a part information but we miss also the real the inside information about these sites and the problem is now that most of them are protected ecologically and we are not limited to do uh, large-scale excavations anymore. When the SAR has been working on these sites on what you call region control and has made a series of view sheds and we found some interesting things when we're looking to the <coughs> looking to the different sites. This is the view shed from the Camelberg. It is on the watershed between the I, uh, the Iser and the List. One part it controls. He has it sees the uh, the coastal area. The other part it uh, the Coiham area falls within the theoretical limit uh, uh, view of of the of the Camelberg itself. What's interesting is about is the coastal sites. It seems in the 70s, when it had nice view, you could still see the coastal site from the Camelberg on. Now with, with pollution of the air, it's a problem to see it. But in the 70s, on a good day, you could see where the coastal areas, and especially here around the dunes around the Pana. And you have here, this is Camelberg. These are some of the coastal sites where salt production is. These are Northern France site in the Song Valley, where you also sent with And Van Dursla, who excavated the site, put in the hypothesis that um, the local wealth of the people living on there was probably based on control of the salt rates. The only problem, the thing that he did, that he neglected in his uh, hypothesis is the information from the different sites here in the Panem the, uh, that are known here dates to the 4th, 3rd century. There is a recent site here on a small inlet that has been found, is also 3rd century while the main occupation of the Camelberg is 5th century. So we have a current pump. It's only in Bruges, the site here for Lapin, that is 5th century. But this is without the range of the Camelberg. So this hypothesis it's, is not really founded well because there's a, there's a difference in time between the occupation of the salt trader sites and the, and the Camelberg site. The other thing is, is Goyhan, that if you see, it's in the limits of the visual area of Camelberg. But uh, one of the things is that, uh, I will talk later about it, it has, a part, except for the camel book, with a high number of this red painted camel pottery. So we assume that there is an association between, uh, between the bo both sides. This is Koyhem itself, located close to the river Skelt. And what's interesting from the point of view, from the view shed is, it seems really to control the um, Skelt. It's focused from a, from a point of view on the control of the river, the, of the river Skeld. And this is then the relation between Camelberg, Goghem, and the fifth century. When Van Dursla was excavating, there was not much known. It's only with recent commercial archaeology that there was more activities. And we see a lot of fifth century rural settlements appearing. And there's also here, and it is it's one site, the fifth century, that is in very specific with the ritual deposition area that is present, but we see have now more information. Although it's limited information, it's uh, open settlements, we find pits, we have a problem for 5th century BC in finding the, the buildings themselves. There's uh, one of the things we have, it's mostly pits that seems to be associated with agricultural activity and also other uh, activities. 
This is Castor Dam, and this is a complete thing that is, is a watershed between the Dender and the Zenne, but it's not focused on one of the rivers. And the last side, Kesselberg again has a very specific location where you see it seems to be focused partly on the Dela and also on the, on the confluent of the Dela River. So two of the sites are really focused on control from the point of view of the viewshed on the river area itself. Here also with Kesselberg, we don't have much information about settlement for this period around it. One of the other things was specifically is this, what we call the red painted camel pottery. There's also red painted pottery in this period, but Camelberg Petty has a specific gastric, it's a very thin clay with the grog temper and also with a little bit of organic material and flint. It is well fired, mostly a dark grey to a black core and the walls are buffed to orange and we don't have complete uh, forms. It seems to be that you have large vessel for the Cetula type and they have also this specific kind of rim that we find, but there's never for, we kind of, there's never been made a possible to be a reconstruct a complete form, but there seems to be open types like this with this rim, and then the cetula types are more closed. The Camelberg, the first finds were associated the round points are this Camelware, we have Camelberg here, you have Goeham where we find it, you have the Kester and also Kesselberg. There's an interesting site where you have some answer here in this place that's called Erfelde. It's not a hillside, it's on a flat area, it's on a sandy ridge in a, in a flat area, but it's located at the confluent of the River Skelt and the River Derm. But it's not really a hillside, but it's also a small excavation where you find some friend. Then we have the other types are other red painted pottery that has a bearing. And recently we have been doing a study of this material also. This is now back to Koeham just where we have this ritual structure, it seems to be an entrance with a building and in the center of it, it was uh, a whole deposit of fragmented pottery, more than a thousand fragments with a lot, a huge amount of this red painted camelware, next to typical 5th century pottery, but this was a deposit. And this is what we think that Koeham and Kessel have a special ratio with, but when you count in numbers, we have about more hundreds of fragments in, in Kesselberg, in Koeham and hundreds of fragments in um, of Camelberg itself. When we move to the other sites, like Castleberg, it's only a limited number, five shirts, ten, ten shirts. So this is the area where the main this pottery has been transported, but it's also present on the other fortified site of this period. Recently, there has been an archaeometric study about Camelware and also some other red painted pottery as a test. And what you see here is a fragment from uh, a site called Hove in uh, the Antwerp, that when you see it, it looks like red painted pottery from Camelberg. The quality is less fine. And you see here the dispersion of it. This is some other red painted pottery from a site in northern France. We have also the red painted camel Camelberg and you see they have a different signal. This is the most of the pottery you find here at Camelberg and the site of Hove, but related to, have you, you find this, these are the sites the pottery with red painted camelware and Hova has a different signal. There is brown presence within it. So that we know this is an imitation effect of red painted uh, camelware. And this is a short overview from the site, what we know for the moment. You see there's still a lot of work and potential things to do. I want to thank you for your attention.